In this four-part film, we explore the issues and approaches surrounding training for problem-based learning facilitators in a medical education context. Through the use of semi-structured filmed interviews, information was gathered from participants attending a one-week short course on advanced topics in problem-based learning at Maastricht University in the Netherlands. The interviewees that feature in this film are medical educators that come from several universities throughout the world including South Africa, Chile, Netherlands, Saudi Arabia, Ghana, and Indonesia. This educational resource is divided into four short films involving a multifaceted discussion that explores initial facilitator development, ongoing facilitator development, feedback mechanisms on performance of PBL facilitators, and the profiles of facilitators at each university. This part of the four-part film looks at ongoing facilitator development. Training the facilitator, I think it's a, it is a, a developmental process because you, we know that the, the, the developmental curve is, is going up during training. And when you train them, they will get the most useful way to deliver what you are to reach your target. And this is, can, uh, can be achieved by development and train them and uh, give them a skills. And all these things can, can, can lead to reaching the object with shortcuts. The main benefit would be um, uh, uh, standardizing the uh, PVL as a learning method, um, uh, improving the uh, feedback we get today, and um, uh, it will help also to um, make some major changes in, the, in our so conventional curricula to advance to a more uh, uh, PVL-linked uh, curriculum. UCT has a particular model of quality assurance for its facilitators. And this model encompasses various activities to ensure quality control, such as initial training in PVL, ongoing facilitator development sessions pertaining to PVL and student learning, monitoring of facilitators with feedback on their performance, anonymous student evaluations of their facilitator, as well as job descriptions and performance appraisals. Now we also have ongoing facilitator development sessions where various topics related to PBL are covered. Now these sessions are conducted about once per month, at the moment in year one only. And these sessions are extremely important because they serve as a platform for facilitators to share their experiences with other facilitators and for facilitators to receive advice regarding any difficult issues that they may be having with students at the time. A typical training session will be to introduce facilitators to a particular topic, say for example, um, creative ways for students to present their allies to their group during a report back session. Facilitators will be divided into groups of four we call these buddy groups. The same people will be in the same group for an entire semester, and the idea with a buddy group is learning through group reflection by sharing ideas and experiences. Each buddy group will be asked to discuss how their PBL groups have reported back in the past and whether these methods worked or not. Each buddy group will then be tasked with demonstrating a creative way to report back, for example, either through role plays or using props, for example, using bones when reporting back on the osteology section, etc. So learning during these facilitated development sessions is active, collaborative and contextual. In year one, there is a dedicated facilitated development team consisting of the PBL convener, which at the moment is myself, and two experienced facilitators. And it is our job to ensure that facilitated development takes, takes place at least somewhere around once a month. Topics to be discussed during these sessions are decided by the facilitated development team and it is based on results of monitoring of facilitators and evaluation of facilitators 
as well as the perceived needs of facilitators and the perceived needs of the facilitator development team. Now the first three years of the medical program are predominantly preclinical years and this is where the PBL curriculum is applied. Up until now, this comprehensive plan of quality assurance regarding facilitator development has only been implemented in the first year of the medical program. And this was mainly due to resource constraints. However, we do understand and accept that there is a definite need to implement these measures in years two and three. Consequently, we are committed to phasing it into years two and three from 2012. And uh, some of the doctors in uh, the hospital also must be trained about PBL system because they also are our lecturer right now. Once a year there are feedback sessions where people, intervision people can come back and ask each other questions and they can have extra training if they want. But that is not obligatory. Um, they ask for, especially the young, new teachers ask for a lot of feedback and more training. So what we do is while they tutor in a block, they meet with the coordinator of that block once a week. And during that block, they also get feedback on how they are doing and, and where they have problems. So they combine the content of the block with the way they are teaching. So that's what's happened when the, their unit, their block is running. So they get feedback at that moment. That's when the teachers need a lot of feedback, especially when they knew, they knew because they have to combine content with teaching manners. And, and that's, that's a big challenge to combine the two. So during um, a block, a block coordinator has time to meet once or twice in the week with all these tutors, and especially the new tutors attend frequently and ask a lot of questions. Beside that, we always have somebody from the faculty development department who you can go to by email or in person to say, I have problems with this, can you help me? And then we offer lots of courses, they are on our website and the faculty development to do uh, a course in block construction, to do a course in extra tutorial skills, to do a block, to do a course in assessment. So we, we offer a lot of, of courses and besides that you can always consult uh, and one of us, of the faculty development part. There are various methods of training there and uh, there are actually different grade of uh, facilitators. There are the beginners, there are masters, there are experts, there are um, different level of experience of facilitating. And the challenge that we have there is um, keeping the more experienced facilitators intellectually engaged in the training programs. Um, so on the one hand, if we, if we pitch the training at a higher level, the uh, less experienced fac facilitators won't actually understand the training sessions. And if you pitch it at the, at the level for the, for the beginners, um, it becomes extremely boring for the more experienced facilitators. So that at the moment is a challenge that we are trying to overcome. According to Dr. Daniel Amoa Kosaki from the School of Medical Sciences at the University of Cape Coast in Ghana, all PBL facilitators receive ongoing training once per semester. These sessions are evaluated by facilities using pre and post training evaluation forms. They rely on the students' assessments of facilitators and the judgment of PBL committees to decide on topics for ongoing training. They believe that ongoing training in PBL is necessary because most of the staff in the faculty were trained in non-PBL institutions and have little or no knowledge about PBL. Without training, it will take a long time, if ever at all, for them to appreciate the PBL concept and work as good facilitators of learning. While a PBL curriculum places a lot of emphasis on self-directed learning, the role of the facilitator is extremely important in guiding the depth and breadth of that learning. Facilitation is a skill that is developed over time with practice, and perhaps facilitated development sessions may enhance facilitation skills. Ongoing facilitated development is conducted differently at different institutions. The number of facilitated development sessions are different, varying from sessions that are conducted as often as once a month and as little as once per semester, to facilitated development sessions that are conducted by request only. Ongoing facilitated development sessions seem to be compulsory at most of the universities featured here. 
It is clear from these interviews that ongoing facilitator development is a priority at most of the universities featured in this film.